Okay, this video should follow a couple other videos that I've asked you to watch. Um, I'm going to do the calculations for the Fourier series for f of t equal to t. To be more specific, it is um, it is equal to t um, between negative pi and pi, and it's periodic with a period of 2 pi. What I have right here is, is, that, is that graph. So notice if I were to zoom in and just look at this spot right here from negative pi to pi, this thing has a slope of 1. Um, and then what I've done is I've drawn more versions of that, so it's periodic, so it repeats itself, that's what it means to be periodic, um, uh, out for forever. So I've drawn one, two, three, four, five periods here. This is the example that I used in one of my earlier videos, um, and I'm going to show you, I, in that earlier video, I just pulled this sign, uh, this, this series out of nowhere, right? said 2 sine of 1t over 1 minus 2 sine of 2t over 2 plus 2 sine of 3t over 3. Oop, this should be a 2. Or 2 sine of 4t over 4. It's just this number here matches that number. So I'm going to uh, show you a formula, and then I'm going to show you how we get this thing. Um, before I do that, the gist of the Fourier series is that um, f of t can be written as uh, where some it's some arbitrary function like the one above um sigma n equals one to infinity um of b sub n times sine of n t um you may say what about a a comes before b well the one that i'm doing right now is only sines it doesn't have cosines and i'm going to kind of ignore that for now so move on we'll do some with cosines and we'll talk about why this one doesn't have cosines but that not is not what this video is about so what i want you to see is all right this is a sigma n equals one to infinity so it says b sub n so it's going to be b sub one times sine of one t plus all right now i take n equals two b sub two times sine of two t plus b sub three times sine of three t plus b sub four times sine of 4t out to infinity. So I have to write plus dot, dot, dot. So what I want you to see is this b, uh, b1, b2, b3, b4. These are just coefficients on different sine functions that have different frequencies. So this sine of t has, has a 1 in here, which uh, uh, will, will be part of the frequency calculation. This one has a 2, a 3, a 4. Notice b1 for the one above that i that i'm gonna work this out right b1 is is one b2 is a negative half right b3 is an is a positive two-thirds or sorry one-third and then a minus one-fourth so the these values are just the coefficients that we get up here so the question becomes well how do i find my bn and this may seem really abstract at this point, but as we go through more and more and more of these as a group, you'll see it and it'll make sense why we're doing what we're doing. Um, so we have a formula for BN and eventually we'll do formulas for ANs as well. The formula for BN is, uh, it is one over pi integral negative pi to pi of whatever the F of T is um, times sine of nt dt. Um, the an is very similar. I'm not talking about it for now. Remember, we're just doing sines. Um, and I'm, I will, you will work out why this is true. I just want to show you an example first. So the question becomes, all right, what's f of t? Well, f of t in this case is t. It's this function right here. So in this case, f of t is equal to t. Let me show you a different example. Say I had, oops, say I had this periodic graph. We're gonna go like this. That's bad. All right, so here, I've got, um, I got a bunch of parabolas, right? Um, and notice it's periodic from negative pi to pi. So say I've got a parabola boom, a parabola boom, a parabola boom, and it goes on for forever like this. Well, do you see how this one is different from this one and that the, the function's different? 
So for this one right here, if I had this, my f of t would be t squared. And we'll do that one eventually, and we'll do lots of others that are similar. Um, but uh, so that's how I identify the t. It's just what is the function that I'm targeting between negative pi and pi. And I don't really care what it does. Or, and I just need it to repeat itself outside of that interval. So hopefully you see that f of t is t um, from negative pi to pi. So I'm now going to calculate this integral with that equal to that. So my bn is going to be um, uh, the 1 over pi integral of t times sine of nt dt. Um, oh, negative pi to pi. Those bounds can change the negative pi to pi, you might suspect, if I have a different interval. And it's going to change everything, but for now we're just doing the interval from negative pi to pi, as I said up here. Right? Negative pi to pi, here to 2 pi. Okay, so how do we calculate this integral? Um, I do integration by parts. My dir side, my int side, t, 1, 0. And then uh, negative sine of nt. Um, now, remember, I'm integrating with respect to t, and um, n is a bunch of integers, right? n equals 1, and then 2, and then 3, and then 4, right? So I'm treating n as a constant in this case. So I get, this should be positive, sorry. I get negative 1 over n, balancing some chain rule or some u sub, however you want to think about it, cosine of nt. And then I get a negative 1 over n squared sine of nt. Now I'll do this, and I'll go plus minus. And notice, um, I get... Um, 1 over pi something evaluated from t equals negative pi to t equals pi. And now I got to do this integration by parts work. I got to multiply. So notice I get a t, actually I'll write it like this, t over n, it is negative cosine of nt plus um, 1 over n squared sine of nt. And I got to evaluate from t equals negative pi to pi. So in order to do that, I'm going to write this out as a really uh, long, wide expression. So this is um, 1 over pi, open, close, and something minus something. So I'm going to plug this stuff with a t equal pi in here, and this stuff with a t equal negative pi here. So I'm going to pause and write that. It'll just, well, I'll write, I'll write it out for the first one. So look here, it's t equals pi. So I got a pi, negative pi over n, cosine of, all right, so I got n times t. So that is, I'm going to flip them, pi times n. That's just pi plugged in here. Um, plus... 1 over n squared, remember that's the double negative right there, um, sine of pi n. And then now i got to plug in a negative pi. So what am I going to get? I'm going to get a um, negative and then a negative pi over n. That's, that's this right here with that in there times the cosine of negative pi n. And then... Um, plus 1 over n squared, and then a sine of negative pi n. Is that correct? Boom. All right, hopefully you see that this is just that stuff evaluated by plugging in the pi and the negative pi. At this point, this thing looks terribly complicated and horrible, but it works out very, very nicely. Um, so what are we going to do? Um, remember, we're taking n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, up to infinity. So, um, we're going to look at this term and this term first. I'll tell you from the get-go, they're just 0, and I'll show you why. 
If I look at the unit circle, and I evaluate sine of pi n with these n values, so sine of 1n, uh, or sorry, sine of uh, take n equals 1, we get pi, uh, or sine of 2 pi, or sine of 3 pi. Notice this would be 0 pi, that would be um, pi. This would be 2 pi, this would be 3 pi, this would be 4 pi. Notice we're always on these multiples of pi. So what do I get for the sine? Well, remember the sine is the y coordinate. So this is equal to 0. This is equal to 0. This is equal to 0. So what I want you to see is that the sine of pi n, this term right here, when I'm taking these n values, is always going to be equal to 0. And then same with this one, we're just going backwards in the unit circle. So these are also all zero. So um, I'm going to rewrite it without those terms. Um, so we get uh, equal to 1 over pi, open bracket. All right, I get a negative pi over n cosine of pi n. That's this term. And then a triple negative here. So I get a negative, another negative pi over n times the cosine of negative pi n. Still looks pretty bad, but it continues to work out nicely. Um, notice I've got a pi and a pi, so I can actually pull them out. I've also got an n and an n, right? Um, so if I pull them out, I get um, pi over n, and I'll actually pull the negative, times 1 over pi, open bracket, cosine of nt, minus, or sorry, plus in this case, a cosine of negative pi, hold on, I have a cosine of pi n plus a cosine of negative pi n, so I just factored some of this stuff out. Notice these guys cancel. That's nice. So I get a um, negative 1 over n, open bracket, um, cosine of pi n plus cosine of negative pi n. And I'm going to run out of time because I have a 15-minute time limit with how I'm making these videos. So I'm going to stop here and then pick up the rest of this in another video.